Hi, and welcome back. Today, I'd like to dive into two interesting concepts, ring modulation and crossfading. First, we'll have a look at the Erica Synth Black Ring Fade, and then we'll dive into a series of patches, starting with some basic ones and ending up with some more complex setups. But now, let's dive right in. This is the Erica Synth Black Ring Fade, a dual ring modulator with a crossfader and VCA. You can use most of the functions independently or create more complex setups by using or overruling internal connections. To make this clear, I'll show a flowchart of the module here on the left. Let's start with the different sections. First off, there are two independent ring modulators. Each of them has a ring input, this is for the carrier signal, and the ring CV input, which is used to modulate the carrier input. Each section also has a knob which determines the amount of modulation from the modulator to the carrier. What's interesting here is that the carrier sound always comes through, even without any modulation. Both ring modulators can be used separately and have their own outputs here. Then there's a crossfader, which can be used as a standalone unit as well. This section has two inputs and one output. With the knob here, you can manually set the balance between the two inputs. Or, in other words, fade from one input signal to the other. And finally, there's a CV input for this section, so you can use external voltages to fade between two signals. That input comes with an attenuator right here. So these three sections can be used independently. Now, let's have a look at the internal connections. First off, both the carrier and modulation input for the first ring modulator are multiplied to the inputs of the second unit. This makes it very easy to create related signals. For example, have one carrier input modulated with two different modulators, or have two different carriers be modulated with the same signal. The outputs of both ring modulators are internally connected to both inputs of the crossfader. This makes it easy to crossfade between the two ring mod signals. Each of these connections is broken individually if you use the corresponding crossfader input. Then, the output of the crossfader passes through a VCA. This section does not have its own input and is part of the crossfader circuit. But it does have a CV input, so you can modulate the VCA for extra dynamics. There are four lights on the front of the module. The red ones indicate the current balance for the fader, and the green ones visualize the activity in each of the ring mods. With the switch on the left, you can determine the coupling of the crossfader, either AC, optimized for audio, or DC, which is optimized for control voltages. And the switch on the right sets the response behavior for the internal VCA, either optimized for positive voltages, like unipolar envelopes, or for bipolar voltages, like LFOs. This package of functions makes it possible to use any of the independent parts in a simple way, or create more complex setups by using any combination of the different features. Let's start with having a look at some examples with ring modulation. A classic ring mod sound is achieved by using two tuned sine waves to create some bell-like sounds. You can feed one oscillator to the carrier input and another oscillator to the mod input, and play around with different related tunings. For some extra dynamics, you can use a gate from a sequencer to trigger an envelope with a fast attack and slightly longer decay, to open a VCA at the end. And if you want, use the same or another envelope to the pitch of one of the oscillators. With ring modulators, it's often interesting to modulate signals before going into the module. To make interesting drones, for example, you can use a wavetable oscillator as the input with a slow random voltage to modulate the wave shape. And use another oscillator through a wave folder as the modulator again with something like a slow LFO modulating the folder. The frequencies used and CV amount really make a big difference. Here's the same patch with a higher pitched modulator and more subtle modulation. Oh. 
A ring modulator is one of these things in modular land that you need to experiment with. Some inputs don't lead to great results, others can be unexpectedly interesting. So try feeding the ring modulator all kinds of signals you can produce within your system. For example, if you use a drum loop from a sample player as a carrier and some white noise as modulator, you can use the CV knob on the ring fade to dial in a certain amount of dust or crunch to the drums. In this setup, there's a simple voice with an oscillator, filter, VCA and a simple sequencer with envelope creating a melody. The result of the entire voice is fed into the ring mod. Now you can add texture and effects by feeding different signals into the modulation input. That could be things like noise, samples or another oscillator. If you're using an oscillator, it's worth it to try and modulate the pitch of that oscillator with an envelope follower. In this setup, you need to multiply the signal of the voice that is used right before going into the ring mod. Send it to the envelope follower and then to the pitch of the oscillator. By experimenting with samples and field recordings, either as the carrier or modulation input, I also often come to interesting textures, dynamic noise and sound snippets. You can try modulating with a simple oscillator, or of course use other samples and textures to alter the sound. If you use a sample player with CV control over the playback speed, you can use a modulation source like an LFO to add extra dynamics. <laughs> With the black ring fade offering two ring modulators, you can manually patch them up in series. Just patch the output of the first into the input of the second. And experiment with using a single modulation source, which is internally multiplied to the second input, or of course use two completely different modulators. Crossfading is a very versatile and creative function. It can be used both for audio as well as control voltages. For example, you can feed a crossfader to different waveforms of a single oscillator and use something like an LFO to fade between two shapes, creating some simple wave morphing. If you have an LFO with multiple shape outputs, you can use the same wave morphing trick to modulate something like a filter in a simple synth voice. Or, of course, use two completely independently running LFOs for more experimental modulation. It's also interesting to use a crossfader to create a volume balance between two sounds. For example, if you have a larger generative patch with multiple voices, you can feed the crossfader two of them and have a single modulation source modulate the balance between the two. If you use a gate signal or a square wave LFO to modulate the crossfader, you can use it to switch between two sounds. For example, two different sync drum loops. In this setup, we can add a clock with a clock divider to trigger the drum samples and a division to switch between them. Similarly, you can use a crossfader as a simple two input switch for CV or triggers. For example, if you take a modular clock and divider again, you can take two different divisions to the inputs and use a slower division to switch between the two signals. If you want, you can even use an unsynced square wave LFO to create more unpredictable patterns. Like I said at the beginning, because the black ring fade offers two ring modulators and a crossfader with internal connections, it's easy to set up more complex patches. For example, let's take the basic layout of the ring fade again. Then use a simple synth voice with an oscillator and filter to the first ring mod, which is automatically multiplied to the input of the second ring mod. Then there is another oscillator which is used as the CV input of the first ring mod, again automatically melted to the CV input of the second. The output of each ring mod is internally connected to the inputs of the crossfader, and then the fader output passes through the VCA to the main output. 
Let's also add a sequencer to the 1V per octave of the synth voice as well as the modulation oscillator. And finally use the sine wave LFO to modulate the crossfader. Now if you use the ring CV control on the black ring fade to set the modulation amount on the first ring mod to the max and on the second to none, the crossfader sweeps between a ring modded melody and the clean one. The black ring fade is also perfect for experimental soundscapes and drone patches. For example, use two oscillators on the inputs of ring mod 1 and 2. And use another oscillator as the common modulation for both ring mods. Then add a slow LFO to modulate the crossfade. Add two tempo synced sample and hold circuits modulating the carrier oscillators and a slow random voltage modulating the modulation oscillator. And finally, another slow random voltage modulating the LFO speed. You can get a wide range of haunting drone sounds and textures by experimenting with setups like this. In this patch there is a similar setup with three oscillators, a random voltage to the modulator and an LFO to the crossfader. But in this case the carrier inputs are modulated by a sequencer to create a little melody. And the sequencer is also triggering a short percussive envelope which is used to control the internal VCA to create a more plucky sound. If you like to support this video series or if you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. And if you'd like to see more modular content from me, smash that like, subscribe and bell button. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.